The dorm that dripped blood, 1982, originally known as Pranks. And then he took the name from the 70s anthology film, The House That Dripped Blood, which was an amicus anthology with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. That movie's known for having no blood in it at all. It's about a house where people, everyone that occupies it ends up dying in it. But anyway, back on to the dorm that dripped blood, the 80s slasher. It's about all these teenagers that go to a dorm to clean it up after it's like gonna be demolished anyways or whatever, it's like retarded. It, and they're talking about nothing, so it's filler scenes. It's a whole bunch of characters doing nothing, doing a whole bunch of nothing, saying nothing, leading, leading up, up to just death kills. POVs of the killer, leading up to the death kills, cutaway death kills, and nothing. Then, so that would be nothing, because the, because the death scenes would be cut away. And, and then there's like three so or two many scenes. There's like, a, a, there's like a first. It's like a gay flag of like you know the the uh, uh, Rainbow, and then it's like a, and then it's like a different. There's rainbow. so many gay pride subliminal, subliminal gay messages. messages. So by the end of the movie, I was gay. Yeah, by the end of the movie, me and El Mid were grabbing ass and about to make out, and we didn't even know it. That's how subliminal it was. But not really. Instead of showing a coke and popcorn, they were showing gay pride flags. Here we go, gay the pride. Drill Here kill. we go. The drill kill. That was a cutaway where he's in the bathroom and he's like shaving or whatever. And Let's got, go. And it's gay like a pride. long ass Let's eight, go. It's an 80s drill with a long cord. The, what's this? What's this is known for? And what got it on the list of video nasties is the drill kill. And I was waiting for it. And once it got to it, it was cutaway. <laughs> once it got to it, they cut away. And it just showed splattered blood going up. It just showed they turned on the drill and it was blood. terrible. No, he hit the radio, the little 80s white radio. But they did have this spiked bat that they used for a death scene. They also had that. Probably uh, the best one. What? Check, or, uh, Casey Jones? No, 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 no. He has the bats, but I'm talking about. A Jose Canseco bat. <laughs> No, she's throwing in the syringes, uh, jigsaw, one of the saws, you know, he's got the bat with the nails. Oh, yeah. And the saw, tough, too. The tough Mexican guy. So, anyway, so it's drill, kill, cutaway, maniac, POV. Okay, then it, then he uses that to clobber the dinner. But before that, a while ago, they already split up because there's the guy that's, because they're at the dorm working to begin with, and some guy keeps on showing up, and they look suspicious. Yeah, there's So they already split up once because it's a horror movie, and then now they split up again. So they go to split up while they have their dinner made, and what kind of a maniac would clobber a perfectly done dinner? Because they all come back, and they did, but, but there's a POV scene of the, of the killer like, showing up. Man, this is some bag, kind of maniac. And he beat all the food and plates and tail that they're set up, and then, yeah, they're like, man. I don't really recommend this. We're going to go on to spoilers for people who haven't seen it and talk about the ending now. Yeah, Overall, I give it a C. Spoilers, it sucks. No, no, it was just a lot of filler. It makes you want to just fast forward. No, what we end up finding out is one of the guys who's like the lead of like the whole movie and who's one of the most sane. Okay, some of the most filler dialogue is they ask, How many eggs do you want? And then they ask every character who's worthless. You're like, He's gonna one. die, he's I gonna die. Character two. Okay. And it just goes on and on. And so on. Then, so then it gets revealed that. Don't you understand? So he's a psycho in love, and he's killed He's killed all the people closest to the main bitch who you see as the final girl, and you know she's going to be the final girl from the opening scene. He's killed everyone close to her. Wasn't there a line where he was like... <laughs> he killed her whole family. He killed her whole family, including her little sister, who was played by um, Daphne Zogina or something. That one bitch who ends up being the killer in the initiation, the 1984 slasher film. But anyway, and so you see the whole thing come together finally at the end. So if you and watch it for a second trick. time, it might be a little bit more enjoyable. 
That's the spin. It's that's a little hard to hearing. digest because they don't explain it all in the beginning. And it's boring lead up to it's 75 and you're like, uh... And you're like, was it worth it? Oh, then the, the junk hoarder comes to save the day. But, he, but the cops end up shooting him. They think he's the freaking killer because he has a mustache or something. So the other kid's like, clean cut. And so he ends up getting away with it. He ends up boiling the body of the final girl. And you're like, oh, and he ends up going in the smoker. And then there was never a sequel, of course, because this movie was a total gr cash grab to begin with. <laughs> Low budget, only filmed at one location, the whole movie in this building. It was all right. I mean, for an 80s slasher, it's, it was solid, I'd say. Not below average, it's all right, but it's a really boring throughout. Give it a C. It's pretty good. And this was JBM and Elmid for Mr. Creepshow 9, right?